I'm ready. How can I best express my love and appreciation to God? Well, the best way to do that is to be joyful. The best way to do that is to show gratitude. Uh, accept your, your humanity. Uh, accept the life that you live. A lot of times people spend too much time complaining. They spend too much time whining. And they don't really realize the wonderful things that they have. In fact, Heavenly Mother talks about this in the Song of God. And I'm going to read to you from the Seventh Endowment. And this is Heavenly Mother speaking. And I'm going to be reading from the uh, fourth chapter, verses 33 through 40, and then again, 43 through 44. Now, listen to Heavenly Mother. She talks about joy and gratitude. And this ingratitude that most people feel this malaise where they're never happy. Listen to Heavenly Mother. Come now and let us reason. Let us find the answer. For there are many who sit in darkness filled with endless woe, moaning always of their hurt, seeing nothing good, proving themselves as those made blind to the power which lies within, fouling the very air they breathe with a litany of complaints. For each complaint becomes a burden. Every grievance a blinder makes, causing that those who feel most burdened should feel their lives a curse, being themselves pressed down by sorrows which seem to never end, being themselves as those made blind to the goodness in their life, proving themselves as those ungrateful for the blessings which swirl about, blessings falling from above like autumn leaves of gold, being themselves most fixed determined to sit within their gloom, spitting out with hurtful venom one complaint upon another to make their lives a waste. Do you wish to be like this, a spoiled, ungrateful child, always hurt and filled with tears, your days a constant shadow, with angry words and bitter thoughts and, and anxious for revenge? Or do you wish a life of joy, a life that's worth the having, a life of light and filled with vigor that makes you want to sing, gathering up within your arms the blessings which come from God, proving yourself a grateful child through the words of great thanksgiving. Let me then this counsel give that you may prove most wise. Learn to want the things you have. Let go your disappointments. For life is made of little things, of moments stitched together, each a rung upon a ladder or a link within a chain. And you alone are made the author which determines what shall be, a ladder that lifts you up to God or a chain that wears you down. If then you would have God draw close to you in the living of your life, then prove yourself most grateful of all your many blessings. For it is the grateful child we answer first when hardships overwhelm, being ourselves most eager quick to rescue and uplift, providing for you that subtle path where you might safely tread until at last again you shine, having traveled through the storm. Look then into yourself and tell me what you see. Are you now as one most grateful for the blessings in your life, being yourself as most aware of all that's good and bright, can you count within your mind the blessings which fall from God or feel within the touch of angels which quietly walk beside you? Tell me, child, where do you stand between the light and shadow? Do not think I hear but chide you or make some great demand. For in my words I seek to heal and take you by the hand, guiding gently here and there as you yourself permit, carefully moving through the darkness to place you in the light. Be grateful and give forth thanks for all that God has done, for gratitude is made the gift which you would give yourself to shield the heart from great despair and guard the mind from blindness, opening up before your eyes the blessings all around you. Now, that is the best way to express our appreciation for everything that God has given us. There are a lot of good things that happen to us in our day. Do bad things happen? Well, of course they do. 
But that doesn't diminish, at least in my eyes, the beauty of all the blessings that I have. I've known a lot of people, I call them doom and gloomers. I see them walking towards me and I know they're only going to have one thing to tell me. All they're going to have to tell me is how miserable their lives are. Well, how did it become that way? They created it. If all you see is darkness, then it wouldn't matter if you're standing in the light at all. You'll still speak of the darkness. That's what you'll talk about. Enjoy the light while you're in it. Well, that's interesting. Heavenly Mother uh, appointed four festivals for the members of the True Gnostic Church. That's the Festival of Joy, which takes place in June. Then you have the, the second great festival, which is the Festival of Lights, which takes place in December. December. Both of these are at the solstice. Uh, you have a summer solstice and a winter solstice. And Heavenly Mother has assigned two great festivals. So that'd be the Festival of Joy and the Festival of Lights. And then she has two other festivals which take place at the equinox of the year, one in spring, one in fall. One is the Lover's Festival in spring, and the other is the Festival of Gratitude and Thanksgiving, which happens in September. Uh, Heavenly Mother talks about this uh, in the Seventh Endowment, and let me tell you what she says. These festivals are given for a reason. They're equally positioned in the year, you know, so that we can celebrate and recharge our batteries. Because I have to tell you, fellowship is fun. I like getting together with the church and we sing and dance and oh, we tell silly stories and we have nice good food to eat and we visit and we celebrate what it is to be human. Because from this humanity, God evolved. Now that's something worth celebrating. And this is what Heavenly Mother says. Again, this is the seventh endowment. And remember, the seventh endowment from the opening verse to the closing verse is Heavenly Mother speaking only to one person. She is speaking to the reader of the seventh endowment. So place yourself in my spot here as I read this and listen to what Heavenly Mother wants to tell you. Come then and let us reason as a mother to a child and I will open before your eyes a life of celebration. For there is given to each and every year four points around the sun which points are oft proclaimed the seasons of the year. Thus at the turning of the seasons shall I now appoint the days of celebration and remembrance to be for you and the generations after you the four great festivals of God, causing that those which live the mortal life might participate with God in a spirit of great rejoicing, to be at rest from all their labors while dancing in the light. For in spiritual jubilation do you let go your lesser self, to stand as one made free in God, to fill your heart with angel wings and be no longer fettered, letting go the heavy burden which makes your life seem dull, becoming instead through great rejoicing the very light of God which would chase away the darkness. Now that's what Heavenly Mother says about the festivals. We have these festivals for a reason. It not only celebrates our humanity, but it celebrates our connection to God. That we are remembered. God has not forgotten us. God reached back so far in time to touch our lives. And that's something we're singing and dancing about. Oh, I've had a lot of people ask me that. I realize that the Festival of Lights falls on the winter solstice, which is sometimes sometime between December 20th and December 22nd, depending on the year. Uh, 
they also want to include Christmas. I discourage that. Heavenly Mother discourages that for a simple reason. You can't blend the old with the new. In fact, it's best just to let Heavenly Mother talk about it. I'll be turning again to the Seventh Endowment. And Heavenly Mother talks about traditions. And this is the third chapter, verse 2, and then I'm going to read verses 7 through 9. Know then that in the founding of a new dispensation is it needful to let go of old traditions, which traditions are filled with burdens of every kind, having perverted the things of God from ages past, to fill the mind with vagueness, causing that you should wander about in a stupor of thought filled with many shadows. For this law we hold most certain that a new dispensation demands a new beginning, and this on the world of the first power only. For in this world so far away is evil found in greater measure. Yet in a new beginning do we sweep away the corruptions of ages past, setting free the heart and mind to gaze at new horizons, becoming yourself a child of light and filled with happy wonder, establishing through a new tradition the realness of God in heaven. For in new and bright traditions do old things pass away, making bright what once was dark, having swept away the dust of ages past, to find at last yourself, a child of God, most nobly born and filled with greater purpose. Now let me tell you something about Christmas. Why we exclude Christmas from our celebrations. Number one, we're not Christians. We're true Gnostics. We don't worship Christ. We worship Yeshua. We revere Yeshua. But we don't celebrate Christmas. Do you know how many people are made to feel bad during Christmas because they don't have enough money to go into overwhelming debt to buy all the gifts they're expected to buy for everybody they know? How is that a celebration? That's not a celebration. That's a burden. That's the one time of the year all the shopkeepers in America get out the, sh the shears and fleece the flock. Because that's exactly what Christmas is about. It's about keeping American retailers in business. It has very little to do with God or humanity. The Festival of Lights is about humanity. It's, it's held on the shortest, darkest, coldest day of the year. And on that day, we celebrate for three days. Not one, but for three days. The light of God's wisdom. The light we find in our own life. The life we find in each other. I enjoy being around members of the church. It lights my candle. I like that. You know. We don't live alone. We are very communal. We are... As a species, we are very social creatures. And so Heavenly Mother gave us these four seasons, these four festivals, as an excuse to get together and sing and dance. It is not easy to let go of old traditions. Not at all. Old traditions have the weight of history. They have the weight of culture. You can't live in America by being affected by the Christmas season. The lights go up, the commercials on TV, the advertising in the windows, the Christmas carols, the, it's all there. It's a hard thing to let go. You know, the song God talks about Traditions being hard to let go. You're reading the third endowment, and this is God speaking. You're reading the third endowment about hard traditions, bad traditions. There are some good ones, and we're trying to create some good ones, but there are also some bad ones. But listen to what God says about traditions. It is tradition only which would keep from you the prize of greatest worth. 
For in some traditions do we find a harsh and bitter master, which would but hold us in some firm and narrow fashion, causing that we should prove ourselves unable to see, or hear, or taste, or touch, or move about in light and joy and happy life, for fear of such traditions as do hedge up the way against us. For if we should think to reach beyond the darkness of ages past, then will the bitter voice of this tradition or that tradition lay strong hold upon the mind to pull us back into the dungeons of despair and sorrow, of which there is no end, except to the one who can break in pieces the chains which strongly bind. Now, God has given us the Song of God with new traditions to help us break the hold of old traditions. It is difficult to let go. People will always be tempted to blend the things which come from God with the things that come from man. So it will cost them the least. And let me talk about that for a moment. You cannot buy God's wisdom. You cannot buy the knowledge of God at bargain basement prices. I am not a merchant. I'm not here to sell you the best deal possible. The song of God is the pearl of God. This pearl beyond price and measure for which when a man finds will sell everything he has that he might possess it for himself. That goes for women too. God's no respecter of gender. It will literally cost you every old tradition you have to embrace God. Let the old traditions go. Embrace the new traditions because that is where you will find two great treasures. One great treasure you will find in new traditions is your humanity, the value of yourself as it relates to God. And second, you will find the realness of God in your life. Those are two treasures worth the having. Those are two treasures worth letting go everything else so that you can have them. Well, I have a question about celebration. Do you have to be a member of the True Gnostic Church to celebrate these festivals? Or have no. Of? And, and if not, where do uh, non-members go to learn about them? Well, number one, you don't, have, you don't have to be a member of the church. Get yourself the Song of God. Learn what Heavenly Mother says about the festivals. And go celebrate. But it does require getting hold of the Song of God. The song of God is God's song to a reader. I'm not that interesting to listen to. But listening to Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother in the song of God, now that's interesting. And this book is now available. I was asked to write it for all God's children. Not just people in the church, but people outside the church. Now, of course, I would certainly encourage God's children to come into the church and celebrate with us. We have a world to make new again. We have a new heaven to create. It's going to be a whole heap of fun. And I stress the word fun. Oh, we'll have our challenges. Don't get me wrong, we'll have challenges. You know, this is not going to just happen overnight. But we'll work at it. Person by person, generation by generation, year by year, we'll work on it. Until one day, we have a new earth and a new heaven. And I would encourage all God's children, if you have any kind of interest in actually knowing what God thinks, get hold of the Song of God. Come visit the True Gnostic Church. Meet the folks. Talk to them. These are your brothers and sisters. You've been separated by your mortal life. Well, get reacquainted. You learn to laugh and sing and dance together. 
That's a good thing. Listen to what Heavenly Mother says about the Song of God. And this is why I encourage people to get hold of the Song of God. This is what Heavenly Mother says. Thus in the Song of God is the mind of God revealed, answering well the many questions which men and women ask, containing within its many pages still far more greater mysteries. For it is in the nature of man to seek the mind of God, being themselves most hopeful in touching the great eternal, causing that they should strive and struggle through many religions to embrace what cannot be seen, but which is felt only within the heart. Yet are the religions of man filled with great confusions born of fear, having been perverted through the many minions of Jehovah, who in the name of many gods did mislead and misdirect the children which were born of God, being themselves most anxious to steal away the children that we love. Hold up, therefore, the song of God, and from its pages read, becoming yourself as good ambassadors, teaching and preaching with joyful hearts that God did not forget, letting shine the light of joy, which reveals the prize they seek to know at last the mind of God and to touch the great eternal. Well, you want to get the song of God. The song of God is written literally for anyone. How many mother has a special message for every one of her children? She knows how hard your life is. She knows the roads you've traveled. She knows the despair you sometimes feel. She knows about your fear, your anxieties. I want to give the very last word to Heavenly Mother. And I want you to take it very personal. This is what she says. I will be opening up, again, the Song of God, Seventh Endowment, Chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading from these verses. And I hope you will take what Heavenly Mother says to heart. What is the gift which we would seek from the children that we love? Only one gift shall prove most worthy. Only one gift do we desire, to see in you the gift of joy and happy jubilation. Proving yourself as those most grateful and filled with song and dance, holding up for all the world this book which God did give, proclaiming aloud its many riches to those which do not have, reclaiming through the song of God this world so far away. For this I tell you for your learning, that you might prove yourself most wise. For in the joy of jubilation is strength increased within you, both of body and in spirit, causing that you should prove indomitable in the midst of all your faith. Thus, if you would prove strong in the living of your life and not as someone weak, then be you quick and unreserved in the expression of that sacred joy which flows from the heart of God, even as a mighty river which would wash away all the weariness from both heart and mind together. Thus would I reveal in you the first power which would awaken the children of God as if from sleep. For this power is the power of joy, which joy is the greatest of all testimonies concerning the things of God, and against this joy would only the foolish speak. For in the heart of every man and every woman is there found the need for joy, causing that every man and every woman should prove most eager to take it to themselves, ever seeking, always striving to dance within the light. For in the joy of God is made the light which beckons from afar, shining brightly in the deep, to fill the heart with hope, reaching out with open arms to lift you higher still, until at last we are as one, you and me and I and you, forever and anon. Now, joy is meant for every one of God's children. The festivals designated by your Heavenly Mother are meant for every child of God. The Song of God is meant for every child of God. Get yourself a copy and read it. And when you do, 
you will stand at a crossroads. The very first time in your life you finally get to choose for yourself whether or not you wish to be a part of God's eternal, glorified, exalted family. You get to make that choice. Zippity doo da, zippity yay, my oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine headed my way. Zippity doo da, zippity day, oh Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs>